our moment of discussion is over. Can we just get some feedback now? So we basically just came up with two or three things, so just make be fast as I mentioned them. One of the things that, as we were discussing, kind of turned up was in, in most of our seminary teaching and, and training, we, we're still so Western focused, even in the material that we use, that we're not contextualizing the material enough for the students. And so sometimes as they go back, they've gone with what they've learned from the seminary and what they've read from the books that we have at the seminaries, and we've not helped them know how they can translate that material to fit and match with his congregation. And now he's standing and speaking with examples that he's read from Wayne Gruden and what he's read from uh, John Piper. And his congregation doesn't know that. And so we need to be intentional both with our teaching and make it contextual enough but I think we also need to probably begin looking at curriculum review and make sure that our curriculum is textual enough that the students who are going to be taught with relevant examples in relevant ways that easily connect not just for him, but even for his congregation. And the second thing I'll just say then, then I take my seat, is that we need to be intentional also with our visitation. I've noticed that most of the time we are okay with, as long as the students are still with us, we come, and when they come, we're following, so how was your holiday, how is ministry, and how are things going? But then when they graduate, most of the time, that's the end. We don't follow up, we don't call, we don't check on them, and sometimes they, it, they get discouraged, and they feel we don't care. But if we can follow up, visit them, and pray with them, and just love on them, that that could be something that will boost their ministry also. Thank you. Thanks, Michek. Thanks for your presentation, and thanks for some of the practical um, examples that you gave. Um, I think, especially in, I've appreciated the discussions with my brother over here that's also a pastor and an active ministry, but I think maybe to summarize what we have discussed, and I think where we stand, because often as theological institutions, there's this kind of ambivalent relationship that we have with our churches. But I think it's important that we as theological institutions understand our place in relation to the churches. Um, and I think we, we have the greater responsibility in that. And I want to maybe use some prepositions that I think will help us to understand that. As theological institutions, I believe we must never see ourselves to be over the churches. Um, that, that's always going to be wrong. We must see ourselves under the churches, in service to the churches, but at the same time alongside the churches um, in terms of being their ministry arm, in facilitating them to, to be the church while we are also part of the church. Thank you. Thank you very much. In our group, we were uh, talking about the relationship between uh, <laughs> seminaries and the churches, and we it might not speak for all parts of Africa, but certain parts of Africa, and especially as uh, uh, Reverend um, uh, Zuru and uh, Ezron were talking, they talked about the disconnection, especially where our finances and uh, supporting the seminary. And we're trying to find out how can uh, this really be uh, challenged. And we were trying to think, uh, that maybe it's because of uh, what has happened in the past where uh, the churches saw themselves as beneficiaries of a well taken care cow that was giving good amount of milk without really taking care of it. So now, when the cow needs care, so uh, the, 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 the cow looks at the, at the church, says, why are you not taking care of me? And it's very difficult. So there needs to be a turnaround in really the, the defining of the relationship between the church and seminaries. So who owns the seminary? And how can that be? I know as Baptists, there's this issue of independence and whatever, but without ownership, sometimes it's very difficult. So there needs to be a definition and explanation and more teaching really 
where churches cannot see uh, the, the, the seminaries as the servant, but there need to be also the idea of ownership. That really needs to be there. Without it, it's very difficult. So, and also, when we talk about alumni not really uh, taking care of the seminaries, that's where really one would try to, to find the, 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 the explanation. So there is that lack of uh, sense of ownership. Thank you. Please pass it on here. Uh, just to, to follow a little bit on what my colleague was saying, I think there has to be a strong intentionality from the seminary, from the faculty, from the people to, to engage church. I think it's very comfortable to stay in classroom, but to rather to be aware of are there issues going on in your community? How can a seminary be service to them? How can we help address, train, equip? Even if it's something, I remember, I don't know if you remember when the Da Vinci Code came out. It caused a huge issue where we were at. So as I said, we hosted a, a Monday evening topic discussing what is this about? How does gospel engage? We had over 200 people show up. So I think sometimes being aware of what's going on in your community that is an issue and be the, let the seminary become one of those voices. The other one is, I know in our context, we have, we're not the people people ask first. People want information. The first place they go is they Google. And if they Google a topic, are there any articles, blogs, something from your seminary faculty addressing those issues so they know, hey, you have a voice here as well. Uh, but I think to be intentionally aware of what's going on around you and how you can engage that involves being preaching in the churches, walking alongside so that they begin to see you as a resource, not just someone to send their people to. A lot of what I was going to say has already been said. Uh, I think that for us in Africa, there needs to be, on the part of the seminary, an engagement that provides opportunities for ongoing education for graduates. Some of them leave schools, and for so many years, they don't buy a new book. They keep recycling whatever they have learned, and they become redundant. The seminary can provide opportunities for ongoing education, not only for certification, even to help those pastors deal with contextual issues in their own context. I happen to be a church leader, and pastors are always calling the office to say, can you help us provide a response to this? And I think that if the seminaries provided opportunities for ongoing education, there are some of those things that they are contemporary and also contextual, that the seminary can provoke those pastors to deal with and provide response for their own local context. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I have maybe two or three things. Uh, the first thing, I think, is even how we get students. That matters. Because I remember when I went to seminary, it was an interesting thing that the whole church has to gather and talk about my going to seminary. If the church approves that, of my going to seminary. So I think the way uh, the seminaries get the students to enroll is also important. If the church is part of the enrollment of students, then the church is going to be part of the seminar. That is one thing that we have to, to think much about. The other thing, uh, I know it's easier to say, ah, maybe we have been teaching Western, maybe we have been teaching African, maybe we have been teaching this. But in my going to school, even not of seminar, just a, a secular education. My understanding was that education is to help me how to think through things. It was not for me to reproduce what I have been given. It was just giving me the ability to think through things and equipping me how to process and how to, to do things. So in that way, if our seminar is aimed is to think people, is to equip pastors to think critically and be able to expand the word of the Lord. Any pastor can respond to any issue in their own context. So it's not necessarily if it was the Western way or the African way or that way. The main thing is, are we helping our students to develop 
at the thinking capacity and being able to address issues. Okay, thank, thank you. you. So how we will go now to complete, we will go over there and finish off with those two. Brother Moses, you want to be... <laughs> we could possibly finish with you within the time we have. From there, the two brothers and Brother Moses, and then we will be done. Thank you, Brother Misek, for your presentations this morning. Uh, I think in the relationship between the uh, local church and the seminary, there has been a lot of confusion sometimes between the church and the seminary. Uh, the church sometimes thinks that the, the seminary is just uh, sucking the money from the church. And so even if uh, they send uh, students to the seminary, they require to help them, support them financially. And so there is this idea of confusions of, okay, the seminary is just sucking money from the, 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 um, from the church, and the church doesn't want to uh, be a part of that because uh, of those two. So I think uh, one of the things that I discussed with my um, uh, friend is um, the communications between local church and the seminary needs to be clear and how to communicate what are the existence of the two things. And we need to ask the questions in the right orders, the asking the why, the who, the what, and what are we doing this, and why are we existing, and what, are we, what is the local church exist for, what does the seminary exist for, and why are they doing the things that they're doing. And I think that is part of uh, building a one train. I think I heard, I heard that from a, a good friend this, uh, this week, uh, during this up 10, that uh, we're pulling to one goal, one ambition, so one together. And if the church and the seminary comes together with that one ambition and one goal, we're pulling in one direction, there will be a lot of good relationship between the church will be able to support the, the, the seminary, and the seminary will pro produce the people that will serve the local church, and that is the service that we uh, provide as a seminary to the local church. Thank you. Brother? I have two particular questions in response to what you have said earlier. Uh, question number one is, should the seminary be producing Should the seminary be producing laborers or should, it, should the local church be producing the laborers? If we look at the biblical evidence, Jesus started as one person. Then he took on 12 disciples who then became 120 at, on, by the day of Pentecost. And then became 3,120. In Acts chapter 4, they became 8,120. Thereafter, they could not be counted because the Bible keeps saying, and multitudes came to know the Lord. And it leads me to the second question. Are we producing scholars who are primarily scholars and not authentic disciples? And how can we accomplish a balance between the two? Because I see Paul as our role model. Paul was, Paul was both a scholar and a disciple. That's why he could say to Timothy, the things that you have heard, pass them on to others. That's why he could say, study to show yourself approved unto God. So I think we have somehow taken the biblical evidence and the biblical structure for growing the church and we've turned it around in support I, I'm not running down theological education, it's, it's very important, I'm a dean of students but I think we should not lose the component of discipleship lest we produce scholars who are full of knowledge and have nothing to present or nothing to offer to the world that they're supposed to produce. Thank you. I'd like to start with uh, <coughs> some information from Nigerian context. We have some forum, uh, fora that uh, can be used, and if we don't have them in our context, we can create them. We have alumni fellowship uh, in all of our theological schools. 
And when we have uh, ministers' conferences in our theological schools, this, this body is meet. And the alumni officer is on the uh, board of, this, of the institutions as well. So he is in a big picture of the developments, the needs, the situation that's going on in the seminary. And I think if we take advantage of a uh, forum like this, we'll be able to hear from them and share with them our burdens and our concerns. That's one I'd like to share. Second, sometimes the tension between pastors and or alumni and theological institutions is because their expectations are not met. And sometimes they do not share those expectations. And uh, sometimes the expectations are unfounded, and the seminaries also are not providing an explanation. I think one of the things that will help is when uh, the expectations are not met, we should find a way to know them, and we should uh, be willing and available to explain why we have to decide the way we did. And that way, they know that it's not intentional. In a way, we hurt them and make them, make them to, to feel that the seminary, I'm done with the seminary, I don't want to see anything, anybody from the seminary anymore. I think this, this will help us to, to find forum within which we can collaborate. And the third thing I'd like to explain also or mention is uh, the, there's a need to help improve on the training of those who are teaching in theological institutions. Uh, some of them are, are having to teach in areas they are not well prepared for uh, because of lack of manpower. And I think uh, opportunities like this would help us to find ways to network and have people who, are, who have special skills in some areas come for short programs or short opportunities and create ways in which we can even invite someone to empower our theological educators in like teaching skills uh, or special areas like research and, and the rest of them. It will help them be more proactive in carrying out their responsibilities and it will, it will add to, to the ability to network with the pastors and the alumni. I want to just thank every one of you for, for responding and giving me an opportunity uh, to bring this presentation. Um, I don't believe it is conclusive, but it is one thing that every seminary should keep right before themselves and try to do the best that we can so that never should these bridges be broken. There should always be going back and forth, the seminary, the church, um, including our denominations. They own these seminaries, but they need to really, really own them um, in totality as we, as we move forward and in order that uh, we can be able to build a vibrant church that will continue to save its time and generation. So thank you very much and God bless you.